big congratulations to last week's winners, comic fam. We have to talk about some more comic books. We're gonna do it. I don't care what you have to say, we got to. You know it'd be another week. We talk about a lot of hot comics on this damn channel. Upwards of 30 plus that we're tracking and communicating with the community every month. Hit the subscribe, slap the like. These are the runners up, the comics that almost made our hot 10, but didn't have enough record breakers attached to them to place them on that list. But they are still record breakers nonetheless. So we got to chat about them here. And Jem, hit them with number 10. Number 10 on the list, we're talking the Joker issue one, the first solo Joker series, a Bronze Age key and a CGC 9.8. This book sold for $1,750 back in September. It's up 63%, now selling for $2,850. This is a tough book to secure in high grade, but hot damn has it been undervalued for quite some time. The Joker is one of the all-time favorite villains of so many members of our community. This is a collectible that everyone needs, regardless of what grade they secure it at. I think that this has potential long term. Everyone loves this book. Jam, just like everyone, I think really enjoyed your recent auction over on your channel this past week. Yeah, man, we had a blast. Tom was there. Gary was there. Nick Barucci, the president of Dynamite Entertainment, was there. We had comic book runs. We had key issues, CGC books, original art, omnibus, statues, and more. And we're planning to do another one. So swing on by to the channel. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss that announcement. You got to follow Jam over on his channel. Aside from doing ongoing reviews of monthly titles, he also is the leader behind reviewing statues and high-end collectibles that most members only get to see from a distance at conventions. Next on the list, at number nine, we're talking a double cover. We're talking about Shazam number one. You knew there had to be some Shazam keys after DC fandom, and this issue is important. It's published after DC successfully sued Fawcett 20 years prior because of the likeness to Superman. Here we are, Shazam number one with Superman on the cover, and he's not even in the issue. I think it's really telling that they didn't put the Man of Steel on the interior story. Just placing them on the cover seems like it's a statement, a celebration, but also an FU to the prior publishing company for utilizing a character that was made in Clark Kent's likeness. And some of these covers were made in error, and there were two of them by mistake. We have a 9.8 double cover that hasn't seen a sale since 2018, which at that point, that 9.8 sold for $800. Recent sales of a traditional non-error version at 9.8 lands at 1,000, making it no surprise that we see a 92% uptick since that prior sale in 2018, new high of $1,534. Moving on to number eight on the list, we have a book that we've never spoken about, a fan favorite book by Terry Moore. What ideal timing, Comic Fam Gem just did a review on this omnibus. Yeah, man, I got the box set, double omnibus. Oh, this thing is heavy. We have Strangers in Paradise, issue number one, the first appearance of Kachu and Francine, and a 9.0 for this highly respective 90s run. $250 back in October, up 115%, now selling for $538. Do the comic members of our channel know something we don't know? What's really cool is that this book would have never made the hot 10 because it's just a one-off sale and everybody would have been DMing me talking about, why didn't you talk about the Strangers in Paradise sale? Jim, we've talked about so much independent goodness over this last year. Stuff that members were literally shocked to see price increases on because of the absence of option news. This one could be one of them. This is why the comic fam needs to subscribe to the channel. Single price record breakers shows the trends of where other members are investing. Don't be late to the game if this book keeps on spiking and you had an opportunity to secure it at a lower price. And next at the list, at number seven, we're talking Cap, Captain America, 323, first appearance of John Walker as Super Patriot. We have a newsstand and a 9.8 record breaker. Yeah, there's only three newsstand 9.8s on the census, and this one sold for $600 back in May. It's up 150%, now selling for $1,500. These are some major gains for a character that we know we will see again. But when is the question? This book has seen some lulls over time. I think that there's some potential for this book. What do you think? 
Yeah, especially the perfect storm of having this rare newsstand 9.8. Like I said, there's only three on the census. And man, they did such a good job of making you hate him in the Falcon and Winter Soldier show. This is a somewhat common book, and we have only begun to see this hero or anti-hero's journey on the screen. Next on the list at number six, break out your combo packs. We got to talk about some Jessica Cruz goodness. Justice League 30 in the combo pack, the second cameo appearance of Jessica Cruz. He's only in one panel. This was a poly bag book, which had a digital code on the inside and a dollar higher on the price tag. This marks upwards of one to 5% of the entire print run from the new 52 run. This First appearance in Cameo is one members are after because of the HBO Max series that's coming that is set to debut a plethora of Green Lantern heroes, including Jessica Cruz. The last 9.8 sold back in June for $225. That is up 156% this week with an all new high of 575. And moving on to number five on the list, we have a what if book. What if issue 14. Now that's what if Nick Fury fought World War II in outer space. Is there some speculation going on here for season two of Marvel's what if? Or is it just the fact that we're talking about a CGC 9.8? It sold for $135 back in 2009 when not a lot of people were talking about what if. It's up now 159% selling for $350. At the list at number four, we have Archie number one, where Archie was relaunched since its 1943 debut and then ended in 2015 with issue 666 and then restarted with issue number one. Confusing comic readers across the board. This is something publishers like to do, don't they, Jim? Yeah, they do it to this day if you read like Fantastic Four, Thor, Venom, pretty much any legacy title. Yeah, instead of continuing that larger number, they'll restart it with issue one. But it just means that it's a dual number to consider. Number one of the run, however, in the sequence of the entire legacy, a much larger number, we would actually see this resume post issue 32 with a legacy number 699 32 issues after that final 666 issue since its debut in 1943 are you confused yet well don't worry you can go to key collector comics utilize code tom 101 unlock a free two-week subscription of the best app in existence and check out legacy numbered issues found in the volume one section on key collector comics where it makes all this stuff Way easier to digest because it's all in order for you to consume. The 9.8 back in 2015 could have been secured for $90. That's up 233% this week, selling for $300. Who knew back in 2015 that this book would see these types of gains? Because that record breaker was shortly after the debut of this issue. Staying in the golden age, number three on the list, we're talking about Batman issue 11, the third cover appearance of the Joker. We had the Joker's first solo and now the Joker's showing up again. A CGC 1.0 is making the honorable mentions. It sold for $1,080 back in July of 2020 and it's up 238% now selling for $3,650. Something fun that happened this past week, I follow Eric Larson over on Twitter, and he was chatting about his all-time favorite Batman covers. And there's two things I learned about this legendary artist. One is that he prefers the Detective Comics trade dress over the Batman trade dress. Jem, which do you like more? Because I've always been a fan of the Batman trade dress over that detective. Blasphemous. You gotta go Batman trade dress. <laughs> that's right. That's right. But the second thing that he talked about was his all time favorite covers. And this issue, Batman 11, made that list. Probably because of the awesome cards that are all over this Joker, Batman, Robin cover. Now, at the list at number two, we're talking Spider Man 51, but we're not talking about the second appearance of Kingpin. No, we're talking about a Ben Riley key appearance. We're talking about a hollow foil 90s goodness. One of my favorite moments in comics just because this is what was on the newsstands when I was a kid, when I was picking up comic books. And Ben Riley is now the new Spider-Man in the current ongoing. So it makes sense that people are going for his key issues. We're talking about a CGC 9.8, which I'm sure are plentiful, which sold for $88 back in 2019. But it's up 377% selling for $420. 
The clone of Peter Parker, his identity revealed in this key issue, a character that Jem just mentioned we grew up with, so there's a lot of nostalgia behind this particular version of Spidey. And you also have a mix of speculation, because aside from him being utilized in ongoing narratives, we know we're going to see a plethora of new Spidey characters, whether it be the animation films or the movies featuring Tom Holland, possibly Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield. Next on the list at number one, the comic that almost made our hot 10, but didn't have enough sales behind it. Enough record breakers, the comic book that dealers and seasoned collectors have known for quite a long time, but the secret is out. The book that has rose to key status because of the mainstream and social media. That's right. This book is not a first appearance. It's not a pivotal moment in comics. It's a book that spawned a meme. World's Finest 153, where Batman slaps the taste out of Robin's mouth. That's right. This is the classic meme that surfaced on the internet that retroactively made this comic book that you could have found in dollar bins a key book that needs to be in everybody's collection. It's one of the funnest books to show your friends. You open it to the page that they recognize and they don't even need to know anything about the world's finest. We have a 6.0 record breaker prior selling in 2016 for $52 up 669% this this week with an all new high of four hundo. Yeah, it's funny how a book that was never a key has now become sought after because of something that became meme worthy in it. And it makes me think of all the other Silver Age stuff that I've seen where they've had old outdated slang or like I think uh, Iron Man really pulled a boner or something like that. Who knows what books can become keys because of the Internet and memes? That's right. That's why I love the comic community and this medium. We have a plethora of comic books that exist and that have not gotten the attention that they deserve because they're waiting for us collectors to find them. Keep the hunt strong. And as always, geek responsibly and stay minty fresh. Enough said. Comment down below. Let me know what you think about this list. Slap that like. Hit the subscribe button. It'll enter you to win a Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy issue number one signed by cover artist. Don McTeague. Have a great week.